Hello, hello, welcome to another uh, screencast in the series about language extension with MPS. In this one, we are going to take a look at data flow. And you should have looked at the unless statement example before. So once again, in this podcast, you will hear my voice, Markus Felter, and... And me, Václav Bech. And we are going to explain to each other uh, how this stuff works. And hopefully, um, you guys watching this will get it as well. Right. That's the plan. Yeah, we'll explore it together with you. Right. So, data flow. What's that? Yeah, what is it for, right? Well, it's for detecting what happens in the code, like unreachable pieces of code, or maybe potentially null values mm -hmm. or reading values before they get initialized. So, okay. this is the task for data flow. And so, uh, basically, if you build your own language extensions, then those have to play nicely with Dataflow. Otherwise, the Dataflow analysis won't work. Right. That's the point here. Yeah, if you want your language constructs to work the same way, the, the base language concepts do, well, then adding yeah. Dataflow is, is a good thing right. to do. So, let's demonstrate the Dataflow uh, stuff before we look at extensions. So this is a, a variable that we've just declared and it's 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 yellow. Why is it yellow? Uh, why is it yellow? Let's have a look. It's, yellow. it's, it's yeah. complaining about something. Oh, ah, ah, unused, unused variable. variable. Okay. Well, I guess that's the first yeah, so effect of data flow, right? Probably. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it is, you know, the data flow task to say, hey, you declare variable, but nobody's using it. Yeah. yeah. So we can well remove it, right? We could, yeah, but then the demo won't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now, what if we use it then? We use it in a condition. So how about if if i is what smaller than five? Right. Now hey, the yellow yes. stuff is gone. Now we're using the variable, huh? Yes. So <laughs> that's uh, good. Cool. But oh we have a red a red piece here. Now so something is happening. Variable mm -hmm. used before it's initialized. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we access a variable that has no value. Right, so that's another data flow yeah. detected problem. If we edit a value here, everything is fine, but without the initializer, now it detected, hey, this is not being used. Right. So let's take a look at the data flow um, graph because MPS actually supports visualizing the data flow graph as a way of kind of debugging what's going on, right? Yeah, so we go to language debug and we pick the show data flow graph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Oh, it doesn't, mm -hmm. That doesn't help much. <laughs> So what does that guy show? So well, this is the whole method, right? So mm -hmm. we take well, what we're interested in is the i, the the variable. So we read it here, mm -hmm. and nobody writes it before. So, right, that's so that from the graph, it's easy to detect. If you start at the top, you go and go and hey, we're reading i, but we never wrote it. So what else is going mm. on there? I guess this write arcs at the beginning basically says that. Uh, if you're in the body of a method, you can expect that the arguments have already been assigned values because that's what you do when you invoke a method. Right. So you, th th writing them means that uh, the data flow engine, well, the, the, the write means that they have a value. Right. And you cannot read them safely. Yeah. The data flow engine assumes they have a value. Right. And then we have the, uh, the read i, which is the problem. And then what's this jump thing? It's if jump. So it's okay. a conditional jump. So in some cases, you might jump to the step seven. Sometimes you might not. So, you know, it's branching. Because there is an if statement. Right. So it's, a, it's basically, yeah, it's the if statement, which potentially might jump to the end or, s or it might go through the body. So just for the sake of example, can you put something into the if statement's body like i equals 20 um, and then see how this changes the data flow graph? Like uh, assign 20 into mm -hmm. i? Yeah. Okay, and now look at the data flow graph again. Right, see yeah. now within the, the uh, w so basically we come down, the, the f jump number five is basically the if, because if the if condition is false, then we jump to the end. Uh -huh. If it is true, then we continue with a bunch of knobs, forget about the knobs, and then you can see that we do the right. So we can even click on those uh, yeah. graphs here uh, or on those notes and see which program statements. Hey, that's cool. That. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> click on pieces and they get highlighted in the yeah. code as you click yeah. on them. Hey, good. So, so that's basically a very, very brief introduction to, to what Dataflow does. Uh -huh. So it builds the, the Dataflow graph. It allows you to look at it. And then there are a couple of predefined analyses that run on the Dataflow and give you feedback about you know, what's going on. Yeah. So you're on less statement. Want to show right. again well, briefly what it does? So just a quick recap. Yep. All right. I'll be happy to show you. 
that's what I've done last night. So, you know, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> so how about, um, let's do it this way. Um, so I can show more stuff. I'll create a, a string variable, s, and I'll give it a value, whatever value. And then I use my handy unless thing uh, with some condition, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, So unless is basically a negated if. Yeah, right. Okay, and that's a language extension that you've added to the MPS. Yeah, language. that's my own extension, my contribution okay. to... Good, and that's in MPS. the other screencast that people should have seen. The first one, actually. Yeah. And uh, now, the first thing I, c I, c I could show here, if we do unless uh, false or true, uh, let me... True is probably, yeah. Yeah, so we got this underline telling us, hey, this is unreachable. Aha. You can never reach this piece of code. Right. Cool, but which is which is correct, right? For true, you never get yeah. there because it's unless and not if. Right. If I do false, then obviously we get inside. Yeah. But then it's an unnecessary unless because you do it always. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And look what happens if you put a return here. Uh, so we return from the method. Now this mm -hmm. gets underlined because this is now not reach. You can't right. reach this piece of code. Right. 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 Okay. And let's visualize. So we go to the graph. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? You know, it's like it's obvious from the graph that these numbers ten and eleven can't be ever reached. There's no, no error going in because no error goes to that yeah. part of the code. So because from here we jump directly, and that's unconditional jump, right? right. It's a return. So yeah. no matter what, you always jump to the end of the method. Mm -hmm. So these these guys never get accessed. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess now uh, the, 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 the the interesting question is, what did you have to do in unless? Well, let me show you one more oh, thing. Oh, okay, 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 I, okay. I'm, I'm pretty uh, okay. excited about sure, sure. You know, this. <laughs> Never keep people from throwing off what they just did and are happy about. <laughs> 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 yeah. So now imagine, I, I just remove that return here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I assign null to s in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I might decide to... Uh, S dot length. Yeah, I might go like you know. I'm interested to see the length of that string, yeah. and now you saw it's, it's yellow. It's yellow down here, telling me this operation wow. can produce no punch uh, exception. Cool, that's actually cool. And if we add a return here, well, <laughs> and get rid of false, but do like something that can be true, can be false yeah. at times. So now the the, the warning here disappeared. You yeah. Know? Yeah, 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 you, yeah. you can't get no pointer exception because here you because we return all return the time. Well, not always, right? Well, if we once oh we right, step if you into don't get into the unless, yeah, yeah, right, I understand. Right. Yeah. Either you don't step into the unless, and then it is still the yeah. empty string from initializer, or if you step into the unless, then you return out before the null that you've assigned results in a problem in your length. Yeah, thing. got it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now is the time to show you. Okay, how this good. Is done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so, go so, so, so maybe just a, a brief general point. MPS has this this idea of language aspects, different aspects of a language, like structure, editor, type system, mm -hmm. and the data flow is just another language aspect. And what you have to do as a developer is you have to define how your program statements, like unless, how they contribute to the data flow construction process, mm -hmm. to the graph construction process. So, and then the existing analyses work on it. So you have to write code that helps build the data flow graph for your uh, new language construct. Right. And as you would expect, mm -hmm. MPS comes with a DSL for describing that mapping from the program construct to the data flow graph. Mm -hmm. And that happens inside the data flow definition aspect. And that's what we're going to look at. Right. So here are all the aspects, like the structure and the editor and behavior right. and type system. Yeah. And here is the, here is the data flow. Oh, come on. No, data flow was directly over it. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So I'll find it again. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So this is the data flow. Mm -hmm. It's not so complex, actually. It's pretty straightforward once you understand the syntax of this language. Okay. So, so shall I go through it? it? Yeah. Okay. I'll try. I, I'll do my best to to explain what the things what things do here. So the first thing we do in the first line, we say that once you enter unless statement, once you come to the uh, unless statement, the first thing that always gets executed is the condition. Okay. So that's yeah. we say code for condition. And that's and that what happened. That's what. So, so the code for basically means that whatever data flow builder 
has been defined for the expression is now executed. It mm -hmm. calls the other data flow builder. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now it knows, you know, here we have the condition, so let's analyze this first. Mm -hmm. Now once we have the condition analyzed, now we mm. do the fancy tricks with the true and the false right. constants. Yeah. You know, so we want to be specific. So we take if the condition is a Boolean constant, yeah. and if the constant happens to be uh, true, so if you say unless true, explicitly yes. true, yes. then we jump directly unconditionally to the end of body label, which is down here. Right. So, so we this basically terminate the whole unless they Right. So we just skip the body and say, you know, if the constant is true, then the body doesn't really matter for data right. flow. It never gets touched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do here. If it's not a constant, so it's a condition, general condition, anything, then we might jump after end of body. So we might or might not conditionally. Right. That's the if jump. Yeah. So it's to tell the data flow engine from here we may branch. Sometimes we'll go to end of body, sometimes we won't and we just continue and we execute the body. So mm -hmm. this is what we say on, on this line. Right, right, right. That's all. That's it. So we basically described the flow through the unless statement and the data flow engine now will understand what the unless statement does in terms of data flow and mm -hmm. the rest is the ma the, the rest of the magic is by the done by the data flow engine. Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, there is one thing we can leave as an exercise for the reader, if you go b or for the viewer. If you go <laughs> back to uh, the demo, and instead of and, and you you create a boolean variable boolean b equals true. And just a second, I'll hide this. Yeah. So uh, inside or no outside? Oh, so just in, in the method, but outside the unless. All right, right so here. So I create a boolean variable. Boolean b equals true. Boolean B equals true. Okay. Ah, here we go. And now you do unless B. Right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe do the Boolean B equals false. Because the point is, um, you have checked whether within the unless statement there is actually literally a Boolean literal. Mm -hmm. However, here you could statically find out that B is actually true. Mm -hmm. So you, the uh, a more sophisticated mm -hmm. analysis would not check whether there is actually a Boolean literal in the condition, but whether the data flow engine can prove that the B you use here is actually always true. Hey, yeah. Right? That would um, be more sophisticated. Yes. And that is actually a kind of analysis that is not by default in the system, but it would be similar in principle as with the null analysis mm -hmm. because you do the same thing right you use the data flow engine to prove or to find out that well not in this case but when we remove this that s may be null or maybe is always null and then you get the error we've seen before mm -hmm. so uh, you could do a similar thing with the the static uh, uh, boolean values and also track their change through the program hey yeah. um, that's uh, I don't know that, that could be that would be cool um, uh, I don't know how easy it is. We didn't try. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's a good exercise. Mm -hmm. And if you find it useful, we, we might post it again. Right? Yeah. So if somebody builds that, send it to us. We create a screenshot, credit you, and we... A uh, screenshot. Screencast. We'll credit you and we'll put it online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea. Cool. That's it. Yeah. Uh, the code for this is, again, part of the project that's on GitHub. And links to that project, you'll find them wherever you see this video. Right. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. See you next time. Ciao.